Don't wring them out. Just bring them over, put them right into the bottom. Any particular way they're in them, doesn't make any difference how they're in there, but you put those in. Then you're going to put in your feeder, and you've got that ready to go. You're not going to put anything in it yet. Okay? You're going to put the uh, syrup in it later. Then you want to bring along one of these. Just the right one. Yep. Open this up. We need to get into the hive. And the first thing you want to do is find the queen. And normally you'd be using two-story hives. So we just have one for teaching, but this would be a strong double. So you want to just look through here. I'm going to look quickly because it's on a special frame. We did that for time constraints. Oh, look, there she is. Oh, she's uh, okay. So right she's like big. that. Put her in right there. In circles. And leave her. If you don't do that, she can be, if you slide her to the side, she'll crawl off and crawl. You, you want to always separate her so you don't have to worry. This one's got a starter frame in it, so we can put this close by. Then what we need to do is get a little bit closer. Okay, we're going to put some uh, pollen and, and nectar in. We want to get those two frames in. And you've got to check these meticulously to make sure there are no eggs and larvae. If there's any eggs and larvae in these frames, this is not going to work. Just nectar and pollen. Then we're going to shake off uh, bees into the box. Now what we want to do, each, if, if the frame is, is covered with bees, you're going to have about a half a pound of bees on each frame. And you want to have in, how much did she say in the class? How many, how many pounds of bees you want in? Four pounds. Okay. Let's say a minimum of four. So with two frames, I've got what? One. One pound. Okay. So then each frame that I shake off is going to have a half a pound that we add to it. So as we go along, we just kind of keep track of it. And when you shake these off, okay, you're going to put your uh, forefinger hooked under here, then come up and you want to throw it up towards your hand and with the, the butt of your hand, shock it back down. So it's just simply like this. You're going to pull it up towards you? Yeah. yeah but, you're going to, but you have to come down at the same time. Yep. Push through it. Fall through. Yeah. You're all doing good shakes. Okay. Yeah. When you, Carrie, when you fall through, just come down a little further. Okay. So you're just stuck. You want to keep this frame like, like straight. Your, you don't want it doing okay. this. Like you're closing the hood on your car. Yeah. And you're not worried no. about getting every bee off of it, just the majority. No. But what's going to happen, the first time you shake it, you're going to get the vast majority of the bees, yep. and then they're going to start clinging to yep. the comb and everything, and it's harder to get them. So, so you want that first off. shake or two to be good. Okay. And just two, two, two times should get them. So then put it back. Yeah. And then get the next one. Well, we're, yeah, we're going to do. We're gonna do that, and then you're going to run through this process without us. Because it needs to, when you're in the bee yard, it needs to be automatic. <laughs> So we put it down in here, two quick shots, that's one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, three and a half, three and a half, three and a half, I'll put in a, another one that's uh, just got nectar and honey. Again, no, no larvae or no uh, brood in it at all. Let's, let's put it on the outside one and the ones with pollen too, right, Jason? Okay, and I want to get them covered up so that they're staying inside. Okay. Now we're going to put this into a, a shady area. And in here, what you'll do is take it into the uh, uh, equipment room where it's dark and cool you want a nice constant temperature and you'll leave them in here for a maximum of four hours ideally four hours works best uh, and then at that point you'll go take your frame and just do your grafting
then when you're done and you're ready to go again you can bring this back out and first thing you want to do is get the bees down so it's a couple of quick taps like that now was there syrup in the feeder at this point no okay now we're going to put the grass in very gently so we could assemble this in the morning, do our graphing in the afternoon, and then finish it up. Yeah, you, you want to stock it between ideally two to four hours after you make it up. Okay. What, what's, what's happening here, the example I used with the other group is <coughs> if you have a mother with twins and you take them somewhere for nine hours, she's hurting by the yeah. end of the day. And you want the bees to be in that shape. You want their brood food glands to be engorged and just rolling with brood food and no place to put it. Okay. And so when they you put the graft in, they just bam. Yep. Go right mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Okay. And then you want to pour in your syrup and you want to do it from the end. Don't do it across because if you've ever done it uh, when you fed syrup your bees before, it has a tendency to slop out. You want it all to go down inside of the feeder. So just open it a little ways. Bring this up. Pour it in and close it. Now the one one thing that you learned when you first started keeping bees, when you're working with bees, what do you do? Move slowly and deliberately. This is the exception to the rule. You want to work quickly. And, and so that you've got them in there, you keep them inside of there. You can take all of these bees out of one colony. You, you can do that. But what a lot of times we do is we'll go through the apiary and pick out half a dozen colonies that are, are strong. We'll find the queens and put them below an excluder. And then when we want to make a shaker box, all we got to do is open that hive and shake. Take and we'll, you can mix and match bees from three or four different hives. It doesn't matter at all. It works just great. What will ruin it is if you have any brood in any of those combs that you stuck in there. So you've got to check them really carefully and not stick any brood in there. Uh, if you're doing that, your colony maintenance means you have to go in every week and move some combs up and some combs down in those boxes you're shaking from. Move the empties down and the young legs and larvae up so that they're ready to shake again the next time you want to shake. You can uh, do it either way. If, if you're taking a double story colony and shaking eight or nine frames out of it, they've usually got plenty of bees to keep that brood going. This time of year, they wouldn't in March. <laughs> but usually okay. Now, if you pulled from, you know, two, three hives to make that up, do you have any concerns about who you dump it out in front of no. when you're done these with are, it? Or? These are young nurse bees, and you're, you're usually rearing queens when bees are pretty prosperous. You know, you're not rearing them back in March or in November or times that they're likely to fight. So. And these are only in there one day, aren't they? Well, you, you can actually use this to start two different grafts. You put a graft in it when you make it up. When you take that out, put another graft in it. And then you need to remake it. But what we usually do is, if we know we're going to use colonies for finishers, we'll dump these out in front of them so that we're... Well, we're you bump up the finisher. To bump up the population. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This, this method is really geared to people that want to rear lots of queens over time. So it's very popular with the commercial queen rearing industry. We'll, we'll show you another method that uses a free flying starter instead of a swarm box. That, uh, that if you just want to rear one batch of queens for your own purposes, is probably a lot simpler and a uh, better choice of how to rear the queens. But th this one, if you're going to rear very many of them, is definitely. And you can start uh, as many as 120 cells in one of these. It's your finisher that's going to be feeding most of the food to them. These guys are just accepting the cells. Once they're accepted, any colony will finish them as long as the queen is kept away from getting to them. But you want that colony to fi finish them to be a colony that swarms strength, that, that's just rolling with bees that will lavishly provision them. Because you want those nice, drawn-out queen cells. You, you don't want these little short, stubby things. They're, queens will emerge from them, and they'll lay eggs, but they won't be honey-producing bees. They'll just be box occupiers. 
So this one really just starts the cells. Yep. Really. The other, the finisher is the one that... Yeah, if, if you graft into a finisher and put the graft right into it, they'll accept some of the cells, and but not it's, it's not a very reliable way to raise queens. We, we did that. I worked in Brazil for six weeks teaching queen rearing to beekeepers and they kept African bees. And they were so runny that it was impossible to find the queens usually. So what we found, and they didn't have queen excluders that were the right size for African bees. African bees could get through the queen excluders they had. They had European bee queen excluders. So what we ended up doing is we uh, would find combs of eggs and larvae, and then we'd put a, a super of honey over the bottom box and the eggs and larvae in a box above that super of honey. And the super of honey served as a queen excluder. The queen wouldn't cross a super of honey to go up in the top. So we were able to graft into that and get them to uh, accept uh, cells. The acceptance wasn't nearly as good as you'll get with this, but it was adequate for them to raise some things. Uh -huh. Probably forget to tell them, right? But just so this becomes automatic, I'd, I'd like for you to take teams of two.